Uh, what we have observed in our previous trial is that um, there are an improvement of two to three points of uh, improvements in feed conversion when we use uh, the alpha galactosidase, and also we see some uh, improvements in amino acid digestibility that will be around 3%. Mm. And also we observe some improvements in uh, um, ileal um, digestibility. However, the major improvements uh, we observe in diets that are uh, reducing energy and reducing amino acids. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Paltry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast brought to you by Wisenetics, where we talk about the latest uh, research uh, in industry trends in poultry nutrition. Uh, my name is Sam Rocho. I'm a co-host of the show and associate professor uh, here at Auburn University. And today I'm actually uh, joined by a colleague here in my department and good friend, uh, Dr. Wilmer Pacheco, uh, who's widely known for his, his work and uh, mainly in feed processing, but he works in a lot of different areas, including enzymes. So uh, we're going to talk a, a little bit about all of that today. So uh, Wilmer, great to have you uh, and, and look forward to, to learning from you today. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, it is a pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think, uh, again, you host another podcast. Uh, you've had some other recordings. So I think a lot of our audience probably know who you are. But can you start us off just giving a little uh, brief background about your professional history and kind of what you're up to now? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I am from Honduras and uh, I obtained a, a BS in, uh, in food science from the Pan American School of Agriculture, also known as uh, Zamorano in uh, 2005. And uh, soon after my graduation, I uh, moved to the U.S., to North Carolina, to uh, start a manager trainee program with the Smithfield. So I was in the manager trainee for a year, and then uh, I was promoted as a night shift supervisor. And I was uh, responsible to oversee the production of around 10,000 tons of uh, pelleted feed per week. And uh, then in uh, 2019, I received a uh, scholarship uh, from the Department of Poultry Science at NC State, uh, where I and I did my um, my master in poultry science and then my PhD in nutrition and physiology in um, uh, in, uh, in NC State. I finished in 2014, and then in uh, March 2015, I uh, moved to Auburn, and uh, basically my team uh, does research. Um, in understanding the interrelationship between uh, feed milling and nutrition, uh, particularly on uh, in broiler performance. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think uh, a lot of people have, have seen you throughout this. Obviously, you have an extension appointment, so you do a lot of uh, outreach and, and uh, both in the U.S. and also internationally, too. I know you see a lot of females and have had a lot of experience there. So, yep. yeah. Great, man. Well, we're going to talk uh, a little bit today about enzymes. I know you've worked a lot uh, over the last, since I've been here and even before that, um, in enzymes. Um, I know a lot of your work in enzymes probably started, and maybe we could talk a little about stability, too, in the female, because that's, that's a big part of it when we talk. But, um, you know, I know you've worked a lot with uh, different carbohydrates, uh, particularly. So, can you talk a little bit about just some of the, the where you're going on, on enzymes and where you've uh, been? Yeah, yeah. And uh, as you were mentioning, Sam, uh, yeah, we have done a lot of research uh, with uh, enzyme stability at the feed mill. And this is because, you know, like the, the feed mill that we have here at Auburn, it provides a lot of flexibility because we have the conditioner, but, you know, after the conditioner, we have the high ionizer. And that allows us to make like different changes, you know, from changing, you know, uh, a conditioning temperature and then uh, retention time. And that allows us to take collect samples after the conditioner and then after the ionizer and then after the, the pellet mill. And that allows, you know, like the companies to know how stable are their enzymes under different conditions. Uh, we have even done research, you know, adding more water in the mixer mm -hmm. uh, just yeah. to add more stress to the enzyme. Um, but you know what I can tell you with the with the enzymes uh, is that they are becoming more heat stable. Mm, uh, yeah, so yeah. That, those are good news. Uh, we typically in the U.S. we pellet around 190 Fahrenheit degrees, which is uh, 88 Celsius degrees, and enzymes are are, are pretty stable uh, under those conditions. 
what you see typically is like one minute retention time. And uh, that's what we do at the feed mill. But also, you know, my team has been doing research uh, with uh, exogenous enzyme, particularly with uh, silanase and uh, with alpha-galactosidase. Yeah. So, you know, I know there's a lot of different carbohydrates out there. I, I would say xylanases, particularly in the U.S. and probably globally are the most, you know, that's the most common substrate that we're, we're trying to tackle. But I know you've done a lot of work with the uh, uh, alpha-galactosidase containing enzymes as well. And this is something we've done some in, in my lab, too, you know, at looking at, at the effects of, of the uh, galacto-oligosaccharides from soy. I mean, I remember Dr. Dozier doing some of this work as I, when I was a master's student. I followed up. So we know that there's a clear impact of, of those particular carbohydrates uh, on energy utilization. And, mm-hmm. and soybean meal, you know, provides, you know, 5 to 7% of those, those specific sugars. So uh, can you talk about some of the, your research approaches to, to looking at those enzymes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like like you like you were mentioning, Sam. Uh, if we look the uh, metabolizable energy in in soybean meal, it's going to be about twenty four fifty, right? K cost per kilogram. But when we look at the gross energy, is over four thousand K cost per uh, kilogram. So there are a lot of uh, opportunities for improvement there. Um, the research that uh, my student uh, Joseph Gulitzia has been doing is uh, with alpha galactosidase. And basically, how we are approaching that research is uh, making changes on the inclusion level of the uh, enzyme. We have just 0.1 and 0.2 grams per kilogram, and uh, we also are uh, making changes on the energy level. So typically, there are some diets where we use the uh, recommended energy le- uh, le- uh, levels by the um, uh, company, by Aviagen in this case, because we, we use uh, typically row 708 and then we have a, a negative control that is going to have like a lower energy uh, typically we reduce the energy by 100 k cost per kilogram and the other approach that we are uh, following is also reducing the the amino acid digestibility as uh, some of the research that uh, we have done is with 96 percent of the recommendation and with 90 percent of the recommendation However, we are currently doing a, a study where we are comparing, you know, alpha galactosidase, uh, and and um, in this uh, trial that we are, we just finished this week, we were looking energy, but also we were looking amino acids, and uh, in this research we were uh, comparing 100 percent and 90 percent of of the uh, recommendations. Uh, what we have observed in our previous trial is that. Um, there are an improvement of two to three points of uh, improvements in feed conversion when we use uh, the alpha galactosidase, and also we see some uh, improvements in amino acid digestibility that will be around three percent. Mm. And also, we observe some improvements in uh, um, ileal um, digestibility, however. The major improvements uh, we observe in diets that are uh, reducing energy and reducing amino acids. No, it makes sense because, I mean, there's certainly the, the direct impacts of the energy. But then, um, I mean, we know with these galacto there's a lot of indirect mm-hmm. impacts as well on, you know, just the, the water retention um, and, and, and the overall uh, energy and nutrient utilization. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, let's back up a little bit on the negative control. You mentioned, uh, you know, generally looking around 100 kcal. So, I mean, in a typical enzyme study, you have a positive control, a negative control, and then you add the enzyme and see if you can mm-hmm. get back or exceed the positive control. Um, I mean, with the modern broiler genetics, I mean, this is a big conversation about how sensitive they are to energy. Are you seeing pretty, um, pretty consistent separation between a positive control and a negative control of 100 kcals. Of course, it's all dependent on where you're starting point too from your positive control. But can you speak to that a little bit? Yes, yes. We, you know, like it's very interesting. And, um, you know, in every in every single trial that we have conducted, when you look the positive control and the negative control, and the negative control sometimes is like a 100 k cost lower energy, and then sometimes it's 130 k cost. And uh, what we have observed in those trials is that when you reduce the energy 20 to 25 k cost, you lose one point in feed conversion. So yeah. when you compare the positive control with the negative control, you are going to see 
about five points difference uh, in um, in uh, in feed conversion. So yeah, you can you can clearly see those differences, but also you know like these modern broilers also are very sensitive to the amino acid content yeah, too. Sure. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. in this in this trial uh that uh, we just finished and uh, this is just uh you know no stats yet but um we had like some um birds that they had low energy and low amino acids and then their average body weight was around 8.7 pounds. Oh, wow. And then the positive controls were like over 10.5 pounds. So the, 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 these birds are very sensitive to, um, to energy and amino acid changes. Yeah. But something that I think is important uh, that we do is that when we are uh, running these trials, we also control the amount of fat in the mixer mm. because you are going to see like the positive control is going to have more fats right added. So we basically control the same level of fat in the mixer and then we use post pelleting um, uh, addition just to maintain the same pellet quality across the, the treatment and avoid that confounding effect. No, I think that's a, you know, again, we're biased here, but that's a real nice capability of our mill to be able to kind of do things like that. And because that always is an issue, these big discrepancies in fat when you have such a large difference. And I mean, sometimes it's hard even on paper to get that again, depending on where you start to get that reduction for the, for the negative control. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as you mentioned, certainly on the the amino acids, you know, that's a looking at 90%, 96%, you said. I mean, those are pretty big reductions relative to we know how the bird responds to amino acids. Uh, that's probably coming with some differences in soybean meal. Are you seeing, like, changes in, you know, litter quality, water consumption, those types of things uh, across your diets at all or in response to the enzymes? Yeah, we, we don't really measure uh, water consumption because we have the capabilities in our, in our research facilities but uh we we don't we cannot measure like in the in the in the houses where we use these trials we cannot really measure our water consumption but yes you see like uh improvements uh in uh food pad dermatitis when when you use these enzymes because they help you out you know to um improve uh, nitrogen retention then you are going to have less uh nitrogen excretion in the litter which in combination with high moisture content is going to lead to to food pad dermatitis yeah yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, enzymes are, are certainly the, the, as you mentioned with the heat stability of the modern generation of the enzymes, I mean, it, you know, again, every enzyme is different, uh, but, you know, just broadly speaking for that industry and technology, I mean, we have really good products available uh, on the market, it seems. And so there's a lot of, a lot of options for nutritionists out there. Yes. Join us at the International Production and Processing Expo, IPPE, 2025 in Atlanta on January 28th through 30th, 2025, where Kerry's innovative feed technologies take center stage. You will discover how animal performance solutions have been transforming global agribusiness in digestive performance, intestinal and microbiome health, and feed processing and preservation. Come explore Kerry's animal performance innovations and join Happy Hour hosts at our booth from 3 to 5 p.m. on January 29th. Anything else you want to add about the work you've been uh, doing in this area? Well, uh, we have been doing uh, some uh, research also with silenases and uh, mm -hmm. also, you know, the same. We, we can see like a nice response uh, in, you know, improvements in energy utilization when you use silenase. And then also in, in, in that research, we also evaluate uh, gut viscosity. And then you, you can clearly see that as you add more uh, silenase uh, into the diets, there is a uh, a reduction in um in, in uh, gut viscosity, which is also one one of the benefits. Yeah. And that's even with a corn diet. Well, no, that's with a wheat based diet. Ah, wheat based diet. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah so we got is. we got we have the substrate there. Yeah, yeah, sure. And is that um, looking at a, a complete corn replacement with wheat, or just a partial wheat inclusion? Complete uh, replacement, and uh, and that's what you know, like that's what happens sometimes even in the U.S. I remember when I was in uh, in the feed mill in North Carolina, and there was a lot of um, a lot of uh, local wheat production. Then we will transition to 100% wheat, and that's you know a perfect scenario to use um, you know silanase enzymes. Awesome. Well, yeah, we uh, we look forward to seeing you know some of these publications uh, continue to come out on your your work on enzymes, and 
you know, I'm sure you're going to continue to be a big resource for the industry on, on enzyme stability in addition to these nutritional responses. So appreciate all the work that you're doing there. Oh, thank you, Sam. Well, thanks again, Wilmer. Uh, it's great, uh, great talking with you. And thanks to uh, all the audience for listening in. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please uh, leave us some feedback. Uh, if you want to make sure to catch the next episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, uh, please be sure to uh, subscribe and then catch the next one. And until then, um, uh, best of luck and, and, and thanks again, Wilmer, for, for all your, your help. All right. Thanks, Wilmer. Thank you. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.